view here is um, be as quiet as possible, which is very good for me, and to monitor the chat. And if I'm sure you're all so used to Zoom now that you're more used to the slides. This works. Yep. Okay. So I will take. Uh, I will give a, give you the introduction. And then uh, Helle will take over and then I will continue um, at the end. So what, what we want to do is to introduce you to our whole school approach um, study. It's about Empathie macht Schule. This is the German title of this project. So it's about empathy in schools, in elementary schools. And my part for this is <clears throat> really to, to look or I'm the head of the scientific part to evaluate this program and the major aim is to give you some insights from our preparatory and preliminary ideas how to conduct this longitudinal research we started in 2019 but now we had some we will probably extend this project due to COVID-19 and will um, proceed till 2024 so it's a longitudinal design with the idea to have different measurement points to test uh, the training. Let me see. So I will start with the background. So I will really focus on the scientific part, the evaluation ideas, and then Helle will go through the content-based and the treatment, uh, the intervention part. So I will talk about the background of the research, the research focus, and how we are going to operationalize it and I will give some insights about the study design and the first data collection. But for now, we don't have any preliminary results. So it's really the first data collection based on the student sample. So the background uh, for this whole study is to focus actually on empathy and relational competence. Like the OECD acknowledges that knowledge focus is not sufficient enough. We need a school environment and atmosphere is very important also for learning. So to feel safe and to have a certain degree of well-being is not only important for academic access, but of course for, the, for every health outcome you can think of. And here I want to, to give you a quote, preparing students with technical or academic skills alone will not be enough. Social and emotional skills such as perseverance, empathy, mindfulness, courage are central. So from this um, background uh, idea is that we, we want to provide schools with competencies and to help them that they can create an atmosphere where they can um, be mindful with each other, take care of each other, be pro-socially oriented. And one aspect from, from this whole school approach is that we want to take into account all participants in the school, kids, uh, school context. So usually or if you screen the the scientific research some some of them really focus on only the kids or only the teachers so here the idea is to have different perspectives and to include the whole school staff and the kids and because they are of course all in all together in this complex kind of interdependence net net so and they all are exposed to a variety of stressors so it's important to take them all in all into account. So the com competencies that enable them to deal with de-stress and the complexity um, are relational competencies and mindfulness, empathy, compassion. And of course, we focus here on the literature that these competencies can be trained. So it's not trait, it's only not, or you could say they are not only personality characteristics, they are there or not, but you can really improve them by training. Um, and there are several, you're probably familiar with, with the um, scientific literature on them, Tanya Singer and many others who are focusing on these things on, from the neuro perspective, but all other different perspectives showing that mindfulness and all these uh, soft skills can be really improved. So this is kind of the basic background for that. And the research focus in the whole school approach from our, in, our, uh, in this project is to evaluate the training and to evaluate it from different levels, just as I mentioned. So it, it aims to increase the self-regulating and relational competencies um, from the school staff perspective. So here the idea is to really train the 
school stuff um, so that we can help and support them to create an atmosphere um, being deeply connected with inside to have an approach looking in yourself, looking inside. And also it would have this as a fundamental essential aspect to be in contact with outside, with the, t with the kids especially. So really to create a relational atmosphere where you can be in contact, nurtured by empathy, perspective taking, mindfulness, these things. The concrete research questions are, if on, like on the school staff level, if there are changes or improvements in the perceived school and classroom climate, if the relational quality um, will increase or change, we want to focus on self-efficacy or different aspects of self-efficacy, especially when it comes to the relational aspects. Of course, well-being, mindfulness, self-compassion and empathy, like some psychological constructs. Um, and on the student level here, we also want to, to investigate the changes in relational quality, self-efficacy and pro-sociality. And also if kids are able really to empathize and take the perspective of other school kids. And so if we can kind of provide and help them with these um, different inner qualities. And the other focus um, in, the, in our research is really on implementation. Like there are some studies showing and emphasizing that implementation is really important to take into account if you want to have like enduring um, benefits. So we really think that implementation is helpful not only to have a pre-post difference, but also kind of to help them that they can continue and maintain what we help them to gain in, in some quality. So here we, we have a focus also on how we can improve and help them um, that the whole school is able to maintain what they feel is helpful for them and to focus and do research on this implementation primarily on via um, qualitative aspects or qualitative approaches. I don't want to go too much into detail here, but here you can kind of see that we have different measurement points. This is now um, here only for the stuff, um, like a timeline. Of course, it has. there are some shifts because of COVID-19, but we started actually um, with the, on the stuff level and in the beginning of this year. So the main idea was that we have a baseline measurement, a post measurement after the training, then there will be a su supervision for one year. You can see it here with these blue boxes. And then after the supervision, and then there is kind of a prolonged follow-up measurement point. This is only the quantitative surveys. Then we also ask uh, the teachers and the school staff to to provide diary data so that they have like logbooks where they can describe their experiences when they are in training and uh, take part in the different modules of the training. Um, and we have um, two groups actually. The two groups is actually a pragmatic or more kind of a yeah, pragmatic idea because we cannot take out all the school stuff and train them. So then we need to help the school that they can um, still provide teaching. So in this sense, we had to differentiate or to separate um, that, or to divide them in different groups. So we have kind of a second group on the staff level. Um, they're getting the same, but they have kind of a prolonged baseline measurement. So it's the same, but they get the training and the supervision a little bit kind of um, with the time lag. And yes, so let me see. And the same is true for the kids. So the kids are also, um, we collect data from the kids via, um, actually we are um, now mainly from the fourth to the sixth graders via quali quantitative um, data collection. And here we have measurement points in the beginning of each school year and at the end of each school year. So. If we focus now, for example, on the sixth graders, we have two measurement points. And if we focus on the fourth graders, we have six measurement points because we will kind of, um, yeah, um, try to focus on this longitudinal aspect when they are younger from the fourth to the sixth grade, when they leave school, when they leave the elementary school. 
And we here you can see that we all in the beginning we were um, we thought that we will also include a diary approach, but here we now were more, we are now decided that we will focus from the qualitative part more on on classroom observations and interviews with the kids as well. Same for the school stuff. Um, so they are not kind of that they don't have to write too men too much or kind of that they are not so burdened and exhausted just by our research. So for the elementary school in Berlin, in Germany, we have the, four, the first to the sixth graders. The focus of the quantitative part is on the fourth to the sixth graders. And the first and second graders are left out. So the third graders are included only in the qualitative part because many of the validated and standardized questionnaires are not, yeah, they are not um, able, we, we cannot make use of them because they are kind of, it needs more cognitive differentiation and cognitive different levels from the um, school kids. So we decided that we really focus on a more interactional approach in data collection for the younger kids. Some example questions only from the quantitative. It's in German because, of course, it's in, um, we do this research in Germany. But just to, to let you or to give you some ideas and insights, um, it's about how, how do, I, do I feel really well in my school? Um, so the upper part, actually, this part is for the um, teachers, for the school staff, and the lower part are examples for the students. So here when we, it's really only really examples. So if I have a good feeling being part of the school, um, if I want to, if I would think to plan a new life, would I still be become a teacher again, for example? Um, or the idea if that I really convinced that I can create a good contact also with problematic uh, students or kids and that I'm really convinced or have this kind of inner conviction that I'm able to, to make a good contact with the different or difficult kids. Or this is a mindfulness question or from a mindfulness questionnaire, if I'm, um, focal, if I'm able to um, come back to the here and now moment or um, the aspect of, um, how you say, to, to really ap appreciate yourself with your own competencies as a whole person and aspects of motivation. And here in the middle, this is a questionnaire on relational quality. It's the same questionnaire for the school staff and the kids. It's uh, the evaluation of social system scale, focusing on aspects of quality and uh, collective efficacy in terms of how we are talking with each other, um, how we are in giving and taking, what we feel, how the atmosphere is when we work together, these things. And this is, these are questions we also ask the kids uh, to answer them. And for the kids, we have different questions on motivation, on how they feel that they get support from their teachers, um, or if they, what, what kind of uh, perceptions they have, how they support each other. If there are difficulties, is it that people like the kids, each other are helping each other? Um, or if there are difficult conflicts, um, is, the kid, is there a conviction that we can find a solution? Um, this is a question of, for perspective taking, I'm able to really focus or understand the perspective of others, like a cognitive empathy, um, and the same for affectionate or the emo emotional empathy. These just uh, very few, just to give you a practical idea. And how we are going to do this, just what I mentioned now, it's, or sorry, actually, <laughs> Hello, you have to stop me. <laughs> Oh, you can stop yourself, can't you? <laughs> yes, I, I, I stopped me now, but I have to, yeah. <laughs> because I have no slide numbers. So maybe it's ah, okay. Know, but if you want to just jump in. <laughs> you want me to say, I, I think I'm going in another direction, you know. I'm talking okay. more about the content. Yeah. 
Yes, I don't know if there's something you want to finish before I go to the content because yeah, maybe this is where I am. Yeah, yeah, maybe I just finish with this and then yeah. we come back later with this. If if it's okay for you, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm kind of in the in the flow of talking. <laughs> okay, it's so okay, just. Yeah. So I think what is kind of unique in this project is that we try to to implement and operationalize a mixed method approach, like to really focus. And this is kind of a challenging part, how we can combine the quantitative with the qualitative parts. And as I just mentioned, we have these questionnaires. That was just some examples. And then we have the interviews. The interviews are done with the stuff and the kids. We have classroom observations. Here we really only want to focus on the kids, on the perspective of the kids. We will do, we, we have one PhD student focusing on focus groups with the stuff. And then we have the diaries and the diaries are, um, the major goal here is that they really describe their perceived process being part of the training itself. And it's a longitudinal study design. It's not randomized because that was due to practical reasons uh, difficult, but it's controlled. Um, so we have different measurement points for the school staff and the kids, just as I mentioned. And we have three treatment and three control elementary schools. We try really to compare um, the kind of what we hopefully can um, get out of this compared to control schools who who kind of get don't get any uh, treatment focusing on these relational aspects i mean as you probably know or <laughs> might think of it's one of the the ways how we are dealing with is that we really control for different um, treatments or interventions they probably receive because of of course also the control condition they they won't just stay in their context but they probably also at some parts receiving different um yeah trainings or hopefully not or this is what we actually talked or kind of um, contracted with them that they would not focus on the relational aspects to have really a, a clear difference or clear dif differentiation so yeah maybe here i will stop and then you could maybe Good. share your slides because, or should I, yeah, I think it's maybe better yeah. to end here and then to focus now on a little bit more from the content point of view. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Thank you, Corinna. Yeah. Thank you. So. Oh, sorry. There are many questions yeah. now. I, see that. Yeah. I just wonder whether, whether it might be nice to have a little pause and ask the questions that yeah. have come up so far. That's still fine. Just to break things up a little. Mm -hmm. Is that to, that's yeah, helpful. I, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I'll chair those as long as I can do the technology yeah. of the thing. I will invite the people who ask them um, to, um, to, to, to I'll, I'll save my questions. They were just to get people going, really. Um, it, it's clear now how many schools there are in the study, I think. Noah, you wanted to know that. Yeah. Yeah, are we clear? Oh. Hella? It's three, three experimental schools and three control schools. Yes. Uh, Mikhail, do you, want, do you want to ask your question about whether there's standardized measures? Yeah, I was just uh, wondering, uh, I, you, may, you might have explained that, uh, but I was wondering if you are using existing standardized measurements or if you had to develop new measurements for, uh, for this particular study. Yeah, so um, the mindfulness for the kids we had to translate because there is a mindfulness translation or the mindfulness questionnaire for kids in English language, but not for German. And so we here translated it. So it's not validated, but we really like the usual procedure, kind of the old fashioned procedure is to have a translation, a back translation with a, 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 a native speaker. So we did this. So we have a mindfulness. It's based on the mass. Um, yeah. So that was a kind of the only um, questionnaire which is not validated for the German speaking cohort. But the rest all over the, the whole rest is focusing only on um, standardized questionnaires from which are usually used in German, not only in Germany, but kind of to give a broader perspective on um, educational research. Yeah. Thank okay. you. 
just while you're on Mikkel, you had another question about classroom climate. Do you want to Yeah, I was that? I was just wondering if if you also uh, if you have found ways of measuring classroom climate uh, or like the the as the system level uh, more than just or if you are focusing mainly just on individual outcome. Yeah, this is I mean, this is a really a crucial uh, question. I think from from data collection point of view, we we are focusing on the individual level. But we have like the this social evalu the, the um, evaluation of system scale is a scale which we try to to um, implement from for the kids and also for the teachers. This is one aspect to have really the same questions. And then from the statistical point of view, this will probably we will try to find a solution via multi level modeling in terms of really taking into account what are latent constructs and also to to focus on how we can uh, focus or take into account the nested data structure but the construct itself the the basic for for collecting data is really um, these questionnaires and each person is filling out the questionnaire yeah thank you okay just what, keeping to questions about methodology Wolfgang had a question about our, our uh, do you want to ask it Wolfgang or shall I put uh, it yeah. for you yeah I can do um, thanks. Uh, in, the, in one of the beginning slides where you showed the examples for the research questions of what changes or improvements um, for the two groups, uh, teachers, staff and students, and many of them were the same, but some were different. Um, but are they actually all the same questions for, for them and you just listed examples yeah. or are there actually differences? No, there are. I mean, there is from the construct point of view, there are no differences. But how, what kind of questionnaires we used, they are different because of the different cognitive levels. So we really try to focus on climate and relational aspects, the, the atmosphere, and then the self-efficacy part in terms of relational focus. And there's well-being, like kind of psychological health and well-being, and empathy, perspective taking, mindfulness. So these are, and, and for example, the self-compassion part, this is a standardized questionnaire for German. It exists in, uh, for the German language. We here could use it only for the school stuff because there is no, no adaptation for younger kids. So this is, for example, something we kind of not included, but kind of had, um, there are some questionnaires in Germany standardized for empathy and perspective taking. They kind of have or they look towards their direction uh, focusing on compassion but the compassion questionnaires in Germany are quite rare, rare so in this sense we have same constructs but the way what we ask are different and we try really when we we had a long period focusing on collecting or choosing different um, uh, questionnaires and was hard to find overlapping questionnaires so in this from this idea we we couldn't really um, come along with questionnaires fitting together like with the same wording I mean mm -hmm. okay um, Cornelius had a, again another methodological question mm -hmm. and then I'll move on to Nimrod's ones more about yeah. the quality of the training but Cornelius you wanted to know about how the schools were chosen I think um, uh, not necessarily how they were um, chosen. I also, by the way, had, an, had a question about the artwork behind you, Corinna, but that's something else. Okay. Um, uh, um, I just wanted to know if, the, if the, the, um, the, the schools that you chose, what were the, what were the backgrounds of the kids primarily? And, uh, and perhaps also the staff, whether it was more homogenous or whether you had a socioeconomic diversity as well as a cultural spread? Yeah. Maybe Helle, you can also kind of support me with this answer. So we have, because we are a team and in our team we have like me and some others are more focusing on research and then Helle and Christina focusing really on the treatment and the content part. Here we had um, contacts beforehand and really try to, to look in different areas in Berlin, the Eastern and the Western part, and also to see if we first, the first approach was really to find schools who are motivated to take part in the training. This was the first, I mean, of course, motivation is really important. <laughs> um, and the second part um, was then to see if we, first we were focusing on the treatment schools who are willing 
um, to share or, or to take to um, provide their teachers and school staff the training. And then in the second step, we were looking for control schools fitting or paralyzing them with socioeconomic aspects. So from this point of view, we, from the methods point of view, we really try to, to have um, Easter, an Eastern school from the treatment and an, a school in the Eastern part of Berlin in the control group. We have um, a school where you have a diverse migration background um, and this we have also kind of paralyzed in the treatment and the control group. And I think um, two schools, one school in the control and the um, treatment condition focusing more on uh, the Western part and higher socioeconomic status. So yeah, I, it was not a, a kind of a goal, but actually the, the idea was to not focus only on private schools or where you have kids they, who already are um, very much supported by engaged teachers and parents. So to really focus on the open or the, the um, government schools so that we can impact or yeah, support people who are in more in need actually. Yeah. But maybe Helle, you can yeah. add some information I, to that. I think it's, uh, you have done it so perfectly. And I think for the, the staff as well, it's not staff who are especially interested in mindfulness or relationship building. It's just ordinary early in schools. What is maybe special is that the leadership of the schools are very positive in all three schools. And I think it's necessary if you want to make a program. So for so long and with so many days for each staff member is becoming fully 18 days of uh, of education and to that comes supervision a year after that. So it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Just to say that Carl Heinz and his whole team were trying to join this meeting, yeah. but they've had technical problems. So oh, okay. they send their apologies and they're looking forward to catching up with it later. So, mm -hmm. and Nina had another meeting, so she had to go. Uh, Nimrod had a couple of questions about the, the content, the intensity and the, um, what the chosen mindfulness-based experiences are. Nimrod, do you want to, to put them? But it may be that Hella was about to tell us that anyway, but, but perhaps pose your questions. Yeah, sure. Um, hi, Corina. We, we yes. <laughs> nice to meet you again. Yeah, now, um, um, in my mind, it was the last mindfulness conference before Corona came in. <laughs> I think it's so. Amazing. <laughs> From my it's experience too, yeah. Um, so my, my, my questions are because of my... my in different places in the world, teaching teachers to teach children or to introduce children to mindfulness, in different places in the world, different models are being used to make it, to be able to, to make it across, to make teachers know enough about it, sympathize it enough, and be able to execute it well enough for the children, with the children. Like a food chain in my mind, from the trainers, of the, the, the official experience trainers to the teachers who are not trained and now they will be trained and then to the teach and then to the children which is a different different than what the teachers express uh, what the teachers experienced might be different than from what the children will experience because teachers adults children or kids so uh, again what what the what there's always compromising how much can we teach teachers and then how much can we teach children? In children is the one week protocol, the curriculum, teachers is the business of their daily life. So what will be, what was your choices for the teachers to make them trained and then the children to make them experience it enough? Yeah, I think I could um, thank you for your question, Nimrod, hello. Uh, I think I, uh, I could um, tell something about the content and then I could answer your questions because then, then I, it would be okay, Corinna, wouldn't it, and Catherine, that I will go on with a bit of my um, content here uh, because it's very relevant what you talk about here. And I will say 
that my start in the work with mindfulness in schools, it was, it was not from a position where I wanted to add mindfulness training to the school. It was from a position where I saw that teachers were treating children badly, if I could say it. Uh, they were hurting children when trying to, uh, in their efforts to teach, they were hurting children unnecessarily hurting them. And they were correcting and adjudicating and disciplining in a way that I didn't like when I came out as a young psychologist in the school 40 years ago. And then I started to look at what is necessary to make that change so that it would be more healthy for the teachers and for the children as well. And um, then I um, started to work on the relationship and I, because I saw that it was, was what was really important. It was the way the teacher as a human being was in the classroom <laughs> and how she or he did relate to the children. So this was my, my starting point. And I, I want to share my screen now, if this would be possible for me. Here it is. I just want to start with this uh, short uh, quote because Corinna has already talked about the different um, um, reviews and uh, research that ha has been done. This is from a Danish pedagogical institute. If we want to create a good learning environment, it's important to teach the teachers to create good relations, to show um, tolerance and uh, respect, interest, empathy and compassion to each child and appeal to the children's understanding of a conflict instead of bullying them. And uh, in the beginning, I, this was, I was working at that and I could see that it made sense, but no one was listening really. And then some decades ago, we started in Denmark to go on with, with um, work like this. And then I uh, came over Jesper Juhl, who I know he's very well known in, uh, in Germany. And he was working a lot with relational competence, we have called it. And I don't know how correct that is in English, but I hope you understand what I mean. And it's about the ability to create, maintain, and when necessary, restore healthy and mutually beneficial relationships. Because they are seen as the basis for a good uh, learning environment. And we defined actually relational competence because it was not a, a concept at that time. And we, we saw it as the professional's ability to see the individual child. And when that, I mean to look at the intention behind the behavior of the child and see the child on its own terms and attune her behavior accordingly without giving up leadership as well as the ability to be authentic in her contact with the child and as the professional's ability and will to take full responsibility for the quality of the relationship. And we started to work on that. And it cost, you know, then you need a lot of confidence in the school system to go in and make uh, people uh, dare, you have, you know, get the courage to work with what is difficult. And we started to look at what is really happening uh, when a, a teacher, for instance, is under pressure, how is he or she reacting very often in a way that he doesn't even approve himself? And then we started to find ways to see how can we work on, at that aspect. We called, we called it the teacher's personal professional development. Uh, and at the beginning, it was not even allowed to talk about because it was seen like this, that if you have an education as a teacher, uh, one, one can do as good as another. And it was really obvious to us that there was a really a personal component in that too. So we started using what we knew about building relationship from a more um, therapeutic world. We were both family therapists as well as psychologists. And um, this was the way we started to use the dialogue. And then we implemented into the teaching also uh, the paradigm sh shift in the developmental psychology, the way we look at children as social beings from the very beginning. And this was not what was when I was a student at the university, they were seen as the opposite actually as small uh, savages that has to be uh, disciplined to behave. And we know this is not necessary. You can really meet them in another way. 
And then comes the question that you cannot meet others more deeply than you have actually met yourself. And then came into our mind, also because I myself have been practicing mindfulness for years, how can we use uh, the exercises, the tools from mindfulness training in this job on strengthening the relational competence by the uh, for the teachers. And of course, if you meet children in a way where you support respect, interest and empathy and compassion, uh, then you also have the chance to develop these qualities, uh, that, that these qualities develop inside the child. Now, Denmark is a very secular uh, society. So it was really difficult to start here talking about something from a Buddhist tradition or Hinduistic or Christian or whatever, when we wanted to go into the public school. And what we are doing in Berlin actually started in Denmark. This is why I, I take this starting point. And then we had uh, the luck that we were a group of very different people in Denmark who came together in a society that we have called the the long uh, name, the Danish Society to the Promotion of Life, Wisdom in Children. And uh, among us was a meditation teacher who is also a philosopher. And he has uh, done a lot of work in looking at, if he looked into the uh, spiritual uh, practicing systems, the, the big systems, Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, Jew, Jew, uh, Jewish uh, tradition and so on, he saw that when he came to the core, there were some components that were the same in all the traditions. And it was the work with the heart, the body, the breathing, the consciousness and the creativity as the creativity as meant as a basic creativity, how we uh, react or how we are without the impulses that are coming from inside, outside and from the mind all the time. And he saw in these traditions that if you work on that natural innate competencies, then you can make your way towards authenticity and wholeness a little easier. And why we want to go in this direction is because if you yourself are in good contact with you, then you can also get into better contact with others. So it can strengthen what we call the relational competence. So the training that we are doing with the teachers um, in, the, in the Berlin schools, there are six, six modules that they are getting. The first one is primarily about the personal professional development and they are introduced to very simple mindfulness exercises. And the next one is about how do you work with that uh, together with the children and how do you get a climate in the classroom so that it's possible also to share meditation exercises or mindfulness exercises because in my opinion you really have to take care of that the, it's not a, a force it's not forced into children for me the mindfulness exercises is for the children to get more in contact with themselves and to be able to to uh, feel the personal uh, boundaries and in order to make, be able to, to not to go over the boundaries of other people so um, this is um, this is why we are interested in this going inside in order to be better to go out again and this was the two first modules the third one is what to do when a child or children are very challenging, because I know it's in the situation where the teacher is under pressure, that they are really, you know, at their wits end, that they are doing things that are not very healthy to children and also not to themselves. So this is what we work with also. And we also have a, a module called um, grief and losses, because this is what comes into everyone's life. And you need as a teacher, if you want a whole uh, holism, uh, you, uh, you know, um, um, way to, to meet uh, children, you also need to um, be able to include whatever is in the child's life in, in some way. So this is also a module. A module is also about uh, uh, working together with the parents how to get into dialogue, how to do it in a way so that it really is supportive for, for everyone. And the last module is about um, 
a colleague uh, intervision supervision how to support each other also after this project has finished um, so we make it simple and we don't make it as programs you know where there are diff there are there are content but you know it's not like you have to do this in this lesson and you have to do this in that lesson it's much more about how do you as teacher come into a position so that you can use your own resources and be as authentic as possible in uh, as so many moments as possible and to 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 pass on you could say the same qualities to the children so um, i think i'm looking a little on my watch now and then so i try to to uh, I just want to say one thing more, and this is this about acknowledgement to dialogue. It's so important. Um, and this acknowledgement is actually, I see it as a tool to reveal and remove the obstacles that prevent us from getting into contact with our innate competences and our wholeness and authenticity. And I have seen that when we, when we want to work with professionals in the school, it's very important with this acknowledgement that we do, that we meet the teachers with the same empathy and compassion that we want them to meet the students with or the children with. So, uh, and this is the difficult part, I think, for me and for others, because uh, sometimes we think it, it has to be so without doing anything but it isn't, you have uh, to work at it. So, what do you think, Catherine? Uh, am I in a point where I have to come to uh, I'm sure people have got a lot of questions yeah. um, about the content of what you're doing. It may be good to just give people yeah. the chance to ask them and that may help structure this final uh, exactly. part of the session. So if you want to perhaps stop sharing screen, Hella. <laughs> Oh yeah, thank you for reminding me. And um, perhaps if people have, have got questions about content uh, or what, what happened, just, just raise a hand and, uh, and uh, Uta can unmute you and just ask you a question. Uh, we'll say, we'll just have 10 minutes on this if that's okay. I'm, everyone's busy. So, and I think that would be, give us a nice hour together. So anyone who got a question that they want to put? Noah, go on. Yeah, I also wrote it in the chat. But in yeah. my experience, uh, some of the teachers are quite apprehensive when it comes to dealing with more psychological issues. You mentioned the grief and loss and trauma, and I was wondering if you had the same experiences. Mm -hmm. Because this is, yeah. this is actually a great responsibility for the teacher. Yeah, uh, yes, it is. And I think it, it very much has its roots in the fact that they don't know how to do it. And I think, uh, uh, at least in, in Denmark, the, the, um, it's said in the law for the, for the schools that you have to work on the whole personal development of the child. I think it goes for, for many countries. And then you need to be able to address, uh, for me, it's not about making them therapists. It's just about to being able to show compassion when a child have a loss or, or something. And I think with very little, it's my experience actually, because I have done this program and this content in many, many different schools, that it's possible to bring most of the teachers some steps in this um, direction. But of course, when you work with a whole school, and we said in the beginning that it is schools that are just, uh, they are chosen, so uh, not because that the teachers are very interested in mindfulness or psychology or whatever. So I'm sure we will meet resistance, I know we will. But then it's part of the way uh, of dealing with that, this is, also what we want to pass on to the teachers because they uh, experience resistance all the time. And I think when they see that it's useful, most of them gain something. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any further questions? Uh, Mikhail, yes, please go ahead. Yep. I'd like to just uh, build on uh, on that question. I'm I'm curious about uh, the role of of uh, trauma and resilience in your in your program and how 
just, I mean, that, that's what you were touching on here, but just if you could elaborate a bit more on, on how you are dealing with, with what, whatever kind of traumas would come up for, for uh, teachers as, as well as students in doing this kind of, of inner work. Mm. Uh, the way we have been dealing with it, it's not, you know, we, we don't have a program about how to work with resilience or something like that. It's more to meet the children. It's to acknowledge that it's there. I think all you can do, you cannot take a trauma or a grief or a loss away from other people. But if you have the courage to, to stay, to be there, with all your empathy and your compassion, you have done a lot. And this is sometimes really difficult to make teachers understand that this is what is needed because they also always want to take it away when something hurts. And it's, it's as you know, not very often possible. So, so uh, this is a, a, a part of it. Thank you. Wolfgang had the same question that I do. I'm, I'm still trying to get a real feel for what you actually do with these teachers. Um, I, can, I know that I, you know, I'm really getting the need for this and the, the concerns you've got and so on, but what actually do you do? And Wolfgang's question put it very well, what specific interventions and practices do you use to develop these relational qualities and dialogue? If I was a teacher saying, so what am I going to do here? What, what, yeah. what, would that, what, does it, what does it kind of feel like? What's it look like? You know, it, it, it can, uh, a module could start with a, you know, with a whole group doing some mindfulness exercises. I think exactly as, as many of you know them. And uh, then maybe uh, also a writing meditation where they get the time to get in touch with themselves and to see what is really going on for me right now. And then we try to slow down the, the, temp, the speed. And, and then we ask them to uh, remember examples from the school day, for instance. Last time when I was with the group and there's written something about it in our blog also, unfortunately in German, but um, there was a teacher who wanted to work at his way of acting when a certain pupil never did his school, his homework. And this is a very uh, simple, you know, very often happening thing. And then in a dialogue, we start to work at going really specific into this moment where uh, the teacher is at, at his wit's end. And then we try to make him more in contact with what happened to you in this moment. Where are your body, your breathing, your, where are your creativity, your uh, consciousness, your um, possibility to have an overview? And when do you leave yourself? Because this is what all uh, very often happens. And these are the difficult moments for many teachers. So this is what we are looking at. And then when, uh, when he come back to that, he, he actually gave a feedback in our blog saying that the day, next day he saw, that he saw in our little dialogue that what he needed was actually four or five seconds to get into contact to himself again by um, focusing on his breathing. And he told some weeks after that it was possible for him to do it, not every time, but sometimes. So this is one thing we are, we are doing. The other one is to try to go behind what the, what the child's behavior, what has driven the child to do that? How can you understand the child? How the intention? How can you meet the child on an existential level and not only be interested in that the child have to behave and follow the rules, but to see what is behind and try to get into contact on that level. And I know it might seem very uh, fluffy, but you know, it's something that they can actually use when they come back to school the next day. Good, that's a, that's a lot clearer, thank you. Um, a supplementary question from me. So are you seeing mindfulness as one of the competencies people are learning or is it foundational to everything else? I think it depends on sometimes how you uh, uh, define mindfulness, but I, I see mindfulness, empathy and compassion. I think this is a basis, you know, and I think as we know now, I think you, you all know, of course, that development is going through relationship. 
This is what we know much more about that than 20 years, 30 years ago. So um, I see this as a basis. So, and mindfulness is for me, a, it's a part of that. So uh, for me, it's essential. If you want to get into a deep contact with yourself, you have to work with tools like that. I cannot say that there ain't any other tools, but uh, this is actually what functioned for a lot of people. And, and uh, we, I think we, we, uh, it's possible to work with it in a way so it's not seen as something religious that you are trying to, we really try to keep it free and say it's about your breathing, your body, your heart, and some, so on. Okay. Mm. So let's have just another five minutes, I think. And Wolfgang, you had a question, and then, then there's a couple that are written down, but you were indicating you'd like to ask a question. Uh, thank you. Yeah, actually, I mean, you asked the question for me, but my just to clarify the follow up would be, do, you, do I understand you correctly? You're focusing on individual um, practices for people. So mindfulness, um, journaling, uh, reflective um, inquiry. And then that translates into the relations. And you don't apply um, specific relational, like dyadic or other practices or circle-based practices that that would be my question we do we, we have a, a lot of dyadic work we have most of what we are doing is in relationship also many of the mindfulness exercises is together or how you work with them in a group i could actually give you a, a hint to some material we have uh, worked out for another project it's called hand in hand and i think the material is on the cce webpage as well uh, because there is a lot, there's a kind of a manual where you can read, manual for school staff, where you can so very exactly read the different exercises that we're using. Yeah. Catherine Mikhail had a, a question here that he'd written, if there's... Sure, um, thank you, Cornelius. Uh, I'm... I'm just uh, aware of, of this, this privileged situation that, that these teachers are in of, of being able to take these, I, I think you said a total of 18 days uh, of, of training. And, and I'm wondering if you're seeing this as a one-off project or if you have any hopes or plans for, for scaling uh, or, or replicating this in, in other contexts and how, how, uh, yeah, how that's going to be possible or how you are envisioning that. Um, this is, you know, to have the possibility to do this program here, it was kind of a dream situation that was made possible for me because I have done a lot of small interventions around in Europe and uh, some of them with a good outcome and also some of them with not so much because it really takes a lot to get into this material and to use mindfulness together with children without making it like um, something that really goes over the boundaries of the child. I, this is for me very, very important. It's, for me, it's more about the Berlin pr project is for me also about to come into the teacher education because I think this is where if we have some results that could aim at, this is something we want to bring into the teacher education. And we have also in Denmark some results from the teacher education in Aarhus. But um, I really want it to be part of that because I think we need to, to think in another way when we want to make school for the, for the future. Not that I know uh, how it should be looking like, but I am certainly sure that it should not be like the school we had in the industrial society. And this is how it primarily is now. So for me, it's about getting some other qualities into the school system so that each person in the school system can develop more freely and i will say it for me it's not only about the individuals it's also about how they can bring things back to the to the society to the community because this is where when we know development is going on in relationship it's of course very important to see how does it function in a in a group of people thank you Thank and you, no, but you had a, you had a question. Sorry, is, sorry, Michaela, I interrupted. No, but do you want to ask your question? Yeah. Um, first of all, um, 
it's always fun to, it's always um, makes me happy to see someone that has such a dream, Hele, so uh, um, very touching, you know. Um, and uh, I, I was wondering if the people that, I mean, it's a continuation of Mikel's question, maybe, if the people that work with the teachers, how, how professional should they be? Should they have like clinical background? Because it sounds like you're, you are going inside with them quite deeply. Um, and is it enough for them to be mindfulness um, teachers, expertise, or should they really have some clinical background to work, you know, with deeper places? Um, and also, if you have time to talk about the dialogue part, which sounds really interesting. Yeah. Also, you, you are thinking about the people who are training the teachers now. Is yeah, this, they're trained yeah. the trainers, yeah. They train the trainers, yeah. We have a, also in Germany a two-year um, course uh, uh, where we train trainers. And the trainers that are together with me in Berlin, they have this two-year course. They have their, you know, profession, teacher, pedagogue or psychologist or whatever. And then they have this two-year training empathy. And many of them have four years of family therapy training as well. So I know that they can, uh, they can uh, deal with that, what is coming up. But I'm also always very keen on, it's not therapy. I'm not talking about people's private life. I'm talking about what is preventing them in the moment to get a better contact. And we are always only on these small examples. And that has to do with the professional life. So this is a way for me to, to keep uh, the, you, you know, the, the boundaries for what should be going on in a contact test like that. And I also think it's important, especially when we work with the whole school as in Berlin, that you are really um, keen about keeping the, the limits or boundaries so that there will be no mixture about what you have to deal with in another context and what is belonging to what we can talk about in the school. But I know it's something that is moving because in Denmark, when we started with that 30 years ago, it was, there was a lot of, uh, what do you want me to sit and, uh, you know, uh, grab in my own navel or whatever they said to us. But right now it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of normal. It's seen that when you say relationship is so important for development, you have to be, you, you have, you, if you want to create a relation, you have to be a teacher on one side and the pupil on the other side. And they have to be at home, both of them, to make a relationship. And very often I have seen teachers leave themselves. And this is all, this is all my, you, you, this is what I'm interested in. It is how can the teacher be with all his qualities in the moment where the difficulties, difficulties um, occurs. So we, we try to limit it this way, but it's, a, a, of course, it's a very, it's a very important question uh, and I have to address it every time we start a new uh, training. Thank you. I just have a final question for Hella and Corinne, really. Is there anything that you would find it helpful if this group of people who've listened to you thought about, fed back to you? You know, what is there? It's been quite one way with us asking you questions. What, what might you hope for from this group or from the CCE? What sort of, what sort of issues would you like some advice on or some support on or some further thinking? I, I don't know whether that's a helpful question, but it might be worth posing it at the end here. I think what is for me so good to share also when we meet in our holism group, it is this also this about implementation. How can we implement these things as good as possible? And what are the active ingredients in what we are doing? Because for me, it's always a question about adaptability and fidelity. Uh, so you have to look at these aspects. And for me, it's so helpful if I can get something back on that point and for sure in, on many other points. But this is what comes into my mind right now. Perhaps we could structure the conversation in, in the holism group next time, building on the back of this. Yeah. To ask the questions for yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> I was wondering, Catherine, uh, as, as a response to that, because that's actually something that, that we would also really like some, some feedback on uh, in, uh, next time we are, Hans and I, or sometime in August, we are going to give a presentation on, uh, on sea learning. And, and we have exactly some of the same questions as Hilly raised now. So perhaps we could also structure our presentation around some of those 
issues and yeah. ask for, for a conversation or some feedback around that. Well, we'll, we'll perhaps what we can do is write to you you program leaders and say are there questions you want us to pull together beforehand so we get as well structured conversation because it it might be a conversation that's of interest to the wider cce again not just to the holism group you know it's so that that could be interesting would would people be willing to do that there's no point in setting up something people are too busy for but if those who are in, who are positively engaged in new programs and want that advice would be prepared to engage in a bit of email dialogue mm what do you think Weber? yeah and then we can advertise that as we're going to be talking about the following yeah. issues Navi, your your group i'm sure might have both questions and things to contribute to that what do you think noah you're part of the purple school group i think hmm. does this sound interesting yeah maybe i have also an additional um answer to your question i think i have to i mean if, if we clarified if this is possible I also would, um, I have two ideas. So I think what I would really appreciate to discuss more on the scientific uh, point of view in terms of how we can really um, combine these mixed methods approaches, how we can um, combine the perceived perceptions with regard to the process of implementation on the one hand, and on the other hand, the idea of quantifying things so that we can be convincing for, for ex stakeholders, for financial kind of people who would finance these research. So this is, I think, really important to, and, and we, like our role is, our self-understanding is that we are here in a process to really how we can um, use or apply different methods so that we can really get most information out of it. And with quanti quantitative um, research, it's always complexity reduction. And with the qualitative, it's really so much details that it's really hard sometimes to really get a focus in it. So I think I would really like to, um, or I would appreciate if we can continue a discussion on this um, scientific methods part, apart from statistical methods maybe. And the second part, because I'm also involved in the AVE and of course the C-Learning, C-Learning Germany representative, so really to focus on um, these embodied qualities, like what you mentioned, Helen, now with the idea how we can um, help teachers and all who are in, inside the educational system, help them to keep the contact towards themselves so that they really embody the qualities they want to kind of provide to the kids or within the in the system. So I think this is really a, from my point of view, a crucial aspect. Um, what are the ingredients to help to create a, a kind of a continuous atmosphere that this is possible, even if there are challenging situations, even if there are difficult times, even if there are difficult kids, how we can kind of help them people to to connect, to be connected with their own values. And one part of the definition of mindfulness is also really to have an inner room to be in contact with these values you appreciate. So I think this is, I think, really important from my perspective and maybe needs more discussion about. But yeah, mm. to leave it like this. My, my, can I interrupt for a moment? Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm finished. My, my feeling is that um, we have uh, reached a stage where it's clear that there's a few projects here that should be talking more to each other. Um, I think uh, Helle's project, I think um, the C project and Mikhail's project and our project, we are in very similar stages and we also have very similar values. Our, um, I mean, we are not a C project, but um, our cell model, the social emotional learning model is the C model. Um, and we've done a lot of work around that. And we're also just now finishing collecting qualitative data. So, um, and I think we also have been doing a lot of development and implementation and specific, um, you know, ideas of things that you can do to uh, increase fidelity and implementation. And um, we're very, we have a long way to go, but um, I think now like, maybe finding a day a few hours that each project will take more time to go into details and then do longer discussions and share ideas and share knowledge and share, um, you know, um, how to do things. I think we're in that time. I mean, I, we reached that point. Yeah, so we, why we not? Run out of time now, but yes. 
Okay, well, it's good to leave people wanting more. I'm hearing three areas, implementation, measurement of various kinds, and then embodiment. Those are, and that we have several projects that are at a similar stage of development, asking similar questions. Is that correct? Is that mm. what I'm hearing? So it, yeah. um, what do people feel? You don't want to set up a meeting that's so long that people can't make it or they lose interest. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. What I think the development. I think the development team, teams in you know all gr all groups probably would be very happy to find time, and and work together because they, all these short meetings are nice. But we you know I think we are um, we need to go to the next step. Yeah, and it combines the, the three groups in a way: holism, teacher education, and research. These are all so. Okay, well, we will we will probably send around a little a little set of questions asking how long people can put aside. Um, and there's nothing, by the way, to stop those of you who know each other getting a meeting together anyway. You don't have to have Uttara, Cornelius and I smiling down on you, um, although we'd love to know if you are. But uh, if we can help to convene that, we'd, we'd be happy to. Mm. Can do, always would contact people me like for... a, a longer meeting or if, if you think... Yeah, it we can longer, organize you know, it. I mean, I, I'd be happy our team to organize something for like August or something. So, so we don't have to take your time. We know you don't have a lot of uh, time. Well, we need, so no, we, we can organize it. I think we'd like. I think we'd like to be there. Really, I'm only, I'm only kidding. But it oh, would be okay. good to keep it together. <laughs> Possibly in a, you know an hour, hour and a half. We don't want it too long. And then people can always talk later. You know, you can. What you could do now is to is to link up after a meeting and continue the discussion over coffee. <laughs> Okay. Well, can I thank Hella and Corinna really from the bottom of our hearts for a really fascinating meeting. And I think it's caused a lot of uh, clarity about what, what, we're, what we're talking about, what we're interested in, what our joint issues are, that's going to be very, very productive. Thank you. So thank you. Um, I could encourage you, Hella, Hella, to give us some details of, of this project. We have a section of the website, which is called Projects you know, in, Under Creation, you know, in creation. So please send us some information on that. That would be great. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank valuable. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was really nice. Hello, where were you when I went to school? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Have a nice. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Have a nice. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. I will join the. Uh, well, gosh, I will uh, stop the meeting for all, so you do not search for the button. Thanks okay. again, Helen. Bye. 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 B